Hi everyone, welcome to this Jenkins tutorial, Headless Execution of Selenium Tests in Jenkins. My name is Jason Silverman. I am with CA BlazeMeter. We provide a SaaS platform for load and performance testing, including as part of the continuous integration process. Continuous testing is becoming a more uh, important part of the software development lifecycle. Since any change to the product needs to be verified prior to going to production, the idea behind continuous testing is to make the whole workflow from a single commit to publishing the new release 100% automated and as a result, unattended. Uh, when it comes to functional testing of web applications, um, the same rule uh, should be applied to that of performance testing. A lot of people look at continuous testing sometimes, especially we at BlazeMeter, as related to um, verifying uh, performance at each stage of the development lifecycle. But functional testing is, is uh, continuous functional testing is also very important. Uh, so when it comes to functional testing of web applications, the same rules uh, that we apply to performance testing should be applied as well. Uh, in addition to backend unit testing and performance testing, it makes sense to run a set, a set of automated functional tests on the client side to ensure that everything is working fine, all elements are visible and operating correctly, rendering speed is acceptable, and so on. As of now, the most popular and powerful tool for browser automation is Selenium, uh, which is a free and open source browser automation framework. Uh, today we're talking about running Selenium tests in so-called headless mode, um, which means that there's no browser window being displayed. The importance of having headless uh, tests is uh, a few different things. Firstly, the majority of Linux server deployments don't have a uh, graphic user interface at all. Uh, and the same also applies to Windows uh, server uh, server core. Uh, for those unfamiliar with this, uh, server core is a minimal server installation option for Windows, which provides a low maintenance environment capable of providing core server roles. Uh, the server core user interface is the command prompt when it's not possible to open the um, to brow the browser in the for uh, uh, sorry, the server core user interface is the is is in the command prompt. Uh, the next thing, uh, the reason why it's important is when it's not possible to open the browser in the foreground, for example, when the build agent is being used for desktop applications, uh, which require focus, or you would like to continue using your machine normally while Selenium tests are in progress. So now let's talk about how you can launch Selenium tests when Jenkins is in headless mode. The fastest and easiest way to do this would be switching to headless Selenium web driver implementations, such as uh, HTML unit driver, which is a wrapper for HTML unit, uh, a Java-based browser implementation, or Phantom JS driver, which is a wrapper for Phantom JS, uh, which is so, it's also so, the, sometimes called the headless web kit, which is a non-graphic uh, user interface browser engine. By the way, um, the WebKit is under the hood of such browsers as Chrome and uh, its derivatives, Safari, including mobile versions, um, and the Dolphin browser um, for Android, um, etc. However, in certain situations, um, switching to a headless browser might not be an option. Like, uh, for example, if the application is under test restrictions, um, for example, the application supports the internet uh, only Internet Explorer, or there is a requirement to test the plugin content like Flash, Silverlight, Java, uh, or finally, if there's a requirement to support certain technologies like ActiveX or authentication types like single sign-on and more. So let's cover running Selenium tests using real browsers in headless mode on Jenkins nodes. In our test project, let's assume the following minimal test scenario, uh, that you use uh, Selenium Firefox uh, driver um, oh, as, an, as the instance of the Firefox browser. 
you open the blazemeter.com main uh, page, the cover page, print the global title, and then close the browser. You can see, by the way, just a little bit about what Selenium Firefox uh, driver is there. Um, that it's included in the Selenium server standalone jar available and download. The driver comes in the form of an, of an, uh, of an XPI, which is added to the Firefox profile when you start a new instance of Firefox driver. The test class is simple. You can see it on the screen here. I'll leave it up for a second. Okay. And this is what it looks like in action. Just let you watch this for a second. It's all the steps that we talked about. Okay. Now let's see how this test can be executed in Jenkins on different operating systems. We'll start with Windows. Uh, in general, running Selenium tests on Windows uh, is not possible. The Windows operating system family always has a graphic user interface, and even uh, with Windows Server Core, deployments are capable of running um, GUI applications without any extra configuration. You just need to get the GUI applications somehow using uh, the command line. For example, uh, you can use uh, invoke web request uh, PowerShell C, uh, CMDLet. Um, however, it's not possible to, uh, sorry, it is possible to run your test on behalf of a different user. This way you can continue working while the test is being executed in the background without having to worry that your normal keyboard and mouse activity will break the test and vice versa. We recommend that you install Jenkins Master or Node uh, as a Windows service uh, for two different reasons. Actually, it'll kill two different birds with one stone. First, that you'll get the uh, uh, failover and resilience if the machine is restarted after installing up updates. Uh, if there uh, is a browser outage or if the Jenkins process dies for some reason. And secondly, the process will be run under a different user account, for instance, a local system. Um, so the browser window won't appear in the current session. Here's a demo of the test project execution on a Jenkins node running as a Windows service. As you can see, no Firefox browser window is present, but the text execution is successful. The BlazeMeter page title, which is JMeter and Performance Testing for DevOps um, BlazeMeter, is being printed to the build log. Just let it run for one more second. Okay. Now let's try running the same text a test on a Linux box. Uh, as can be seen from the bottom of the build log, um, which I hope you can see on the screen there. Uh, Jenkins failed to start the Firefox browser. Um, being a uh, GUI application, Firefox requires a display to run at. So LinkedIn, uh, Linux operating systems use the um, display, use display server to draw windows, receive input and react with output. Any um, graphic user interface based program requires something called display, a screen or multiple screens where output is rendered. 
Uh, Linux operating systems use a display server to draw windows. Receive input and react with the output. Um, sorry, um, I've mentioned this already. If the Linux installation doesn't assume the graphic user interface, you can use uh, something called X virtual frame buffer to mock up the missing display. Uh, just to give you a little bit more information, X virtual frame buffer is a display server implementing the X11 display server protocol. And in contrast to other display servers, XV, um, VFB performs all graphical uh, operations in memory without showing any screen output. From the point of view of the client, it acts exactly like any other X display server serving requests and sending events and errors as appropriate. However, no output is shown. This virtual server does not require the computer it is running on to have a screen or an input device. Only a network layer is necessary. So if you don't have the um, X virtual frame buffer installed, um, for example, if the uh, X VFB returns the command not found message, you have to install it from your Linux distribution repositories. Um, okay, in the code that you can see XVFB, um, N, uh, dash N, N stands for the number uh, of the display. In Linux, the display numbers are zero based and normally the user is sitting on the display uh, is sitting on display zero. So you can start X virtual frame buffer on the display zero as, and you can see on the screen, X VFB zero is a greater than ampersand uh, slash dev slash null ampersand. The remainder of the command after uh, zero is to suppress the X VFB output. Uh, it prints quite a lot of noise to the command line. So if you add uh, the greater than uh, ampersand slash dev slash null and postfix, you'll see only XVFP process, the XVFP process, um, uh, XVFB, sorry, process ID, um, which in this case is 14169. The next step is to tell Jenkins to use this display uh, zero for launching Firefox. On Linux systems, it can be done by setting the display environment variable. Um, so you can either refer your Linux distribution documentation to learn how to set it, or do it on the Jenkins level, um, which you can see here, uh, for example, under the manage Jenkins configure system, global properties, and then environment variables section. Or in the case of an individual of the individual build agent, the same settings live under manage Jenkins, manage nodes, percentage node, uh, name percentage, node properties, and then environment variables. To get to the configuration dialog, click on the gear icon, which you can see there, uh, next to the node name. Once you've launched the X virtual frame buffer and set up the display environment variable matching the virtual uh, display number, the build should succeed and you should see the blaze meter main page title in the build log, which you can see is the case here on the screen. So let's talk uh, about Mac uh, operating system. Uh, as Mac OS X is a Unix-based operating system, the approach should be the same for as, as it is for Linux. Um, the X Windows Server implementation for Mac OS X is something called XQuartz. Um, XQuartz is an open source effort to develop a version of the Xorg, uh, Xorg X Windows system that runs on OS X. However, you may have to recompile it to support the XVB uh, XVFB feature and the browser you're intending to use it so um, you would use the uh, it would use the X11 server instead of uh, the Aqua uh, graphic interface. That's pretty much it uh, in terms of uh, headless uh, server executions. Um, so um, for more information uh, about Jenkins and to install it you can go to Jenkins.io for Selenium, it's seleniumhq.org. Um, our blog, the Blazemeter blog, uh, which has a lot of really interesting articles and a lot of 
how to's on, I didn't even discuss, but Apache JMeter, which is an open source, the leading open source tool for load and performance testing, Jenkins, Selenium, um, continuous integration and delivery is at blazemeter.com uh, slash blog. Um, our resources page also is rich in information with a lot of these Jenkins tutorial videos that we've been doing, uh, webinar recordings, white papers, and a whole lot more. That's at blazemeter.com slash resources. I haven't really discussed Blazemeter uh, in this Jenkins tutorial. As I mentioned, it's a SaaS platform for load and performance testing. Um, for more information about it and to create a free account, you can do so today at blazemeter.com. Uh, and if you have any additional questions about Blazemeter or would like to request a one-on-one -on -one demo, you can do so at sales at blazemeter.com. Thank you very much, everyone, for your um, uh, attention uh, and uh, for watching this video. Um, and have a great day.